Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Seven hundred. Seven hundred times a day you open your mouth. Twelve thousand sentences come out and a hundred thousand words they contain. And each word has power. The power to speak life, encouragement, love, hope, peace. Our words are like a fruit and we'll eat of these. Or we'll eat of gossip and lies and slander. All the while putting our souls in danger. Because the words I speak don't just impact you but also change me. The power of life and death is found in the words that come off of your tongue. The power of life and death is found in the words that come off of your tongue. What will your tongue speak? Hey, well, good morning, Crossroads. Uh, So good to be with you guys this morning. I was kind of excited. It's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you. I was excited to be at church on Valentine's Day, but alas, uh, the weather, this very strange weather we're getting. I I looked on my phone and saw five degrees uh, is the projection for Monday. I'm like, where do I live? Is this Minnesota or something? Uh, It actually reminded me of a a joke of a guy who moved from Texas to Minnesota and he decided he wanted to get into ice fishing. And so he went up and, uh, you know, got all the gear he needed and went out one day and cut a hole in the ice and plopped his uh, fishing pole in there and he's just sitting out there freezing. He's like, man, how do people do this? It's so cold here. Well, while he's sitting there, a guy uh, comes out and digs a hole, uh, pops a hole next to him and drops his bait in there and bam, he pulls up a fish. And the guy from Texas is like, how did he get that fish so fast? So he, uh, he, he's like, turns to the guy and says, hey, excuse me, sir, how do you, what's the secret to catching fish here? And the guy turns to him and goes, hmm. And the guy from Texas is just, he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. That's such a weird response. Well, he's sitting there freezing, just not catching a thing. And the guy next to him just pulling up one fish after another. He finally turns to the guy again. He says, man, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to offend you, but I'm, I'm from Texas and I just really know, like, what's the secret? Why, how are you catching all these fish? And he goes, mmm. the guy's like, man, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand a thing you're saying. And the man next to him goes, Bleh. You got to keep the worms warm. <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of a disgusting joke, but it, I always think about it when it gets super cold and I think about people that live in this all the time. So we're going to continue our series uh, today called More Than Words. And we're, gonna, we're talking about the life-changing power of, of, of words. And Pastor Marcus led us off last week talking about how words are containers and this, the idea that life and death are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So basically words are containers and when you offer a word to somebody it can either have negative negativity, things that tear down, things that destroy in it, or your words can speak life and bring life to others. And we're talking about uh, three key things. I want to talk today about the importance of your tone in the way you communicate. And this was really brought clear to me recently. Uh, I was talking to a friend a few months ago, to actually a, a husband and wife couple and they were talking about how they really wanted to write a book and we were doing this by text message we were writing back and forth and they were just feeling so overwhelmed because of their life and the way their life was going and how busy it was and they just didn't have time to sit down and write a book so I was trying to take some pressure off of them and I wrote something to the effect of you guys just don't have the bandwidth right now the way your life is to be able to do it so don't stress out uh, just you know it's just not the time to write the book well, I thought I'd really encouraged her and, and, and both of them. Well, a few weeks later, I was sitting down with them and, and she said, you know, you really made me cry that day when you told me that. I said, I made you cry. I, I thought I was encouraging you. And, and her husband was like, yeah, like I've never seen her cry quite that much and just freak out. She said, she said yeah, when you told me I didn't have what it took, I wasn't enough, it was just devastating to me. She said, I went and took a writing course and all this stuff. I'm like, wait, hold up. I was trying to release you from feeling pressure to to produce this this book right now in this stressful time of your life. I was saying you don't have the the bandwidth, meaning you don't have the space right now, and don't don't overwhelm yourself. There will be time for it later. 
But what, because there was no tone in the text message, text messages are so harsh, uh, what she heard was, you're not enough. You don't have what it takes. And man, it reminded me of just how important, first of all, face-to-face -face presence can be. And man, it, you've probably seen this in your life. You can, things can really be miscommunicated with text messages. Add to that, man, autocorrect can really mess things up. When you put autocorrect and you're trying to say something and it says something completely opposite and you don't have time to check it before you send it and all of a sudden you find yourself in these weird things saying, oops, I didn't mean to send that or oh, stupid autocorrect, you ever done that? Here, here's what I know about you. you. You, at some point in your relationships with others, have had a moment where you, where you say, I didn't mean for it to sound that way. I didn't mean for it to come out like that. I didn't mean for it to sound like that in your ears, but somebody misunderstood it. George Bernard, Bernard Shaw, he said, the single greatest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And how often do we think we've communicated something clearly and then somebody goes and does maybe the opposite of what we said or completely misunderstands what we've said and we thought we said it really clearly. Maybe we said, well, we're just, I'm just going to tell them the way it is. And it, and it ends up becoming this harsh thing in their ears like that, that text I was trying to encourage someone and it came back negatively. So I want to talk about this morning the importance of tone. And I, I specifically picked tone for Valentine's Day because uh, there's a verse in, in 1 Corinthians 13. Um, we, we all have probably heard this verse. It's, this is the, the love verse. If you've ever been to a wedding, you've probably heard this verse. It says, if, this is Paul, he says, he says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but don't have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Some of you guys know I play the drums and one of the biggest challenges when you play the drums is that you're, you're like from the time you start playing drums you're always told you're too loud it's too loud that's one of the things I love at Crossroads uh, we get to get to beat those drums and 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 nobody complains about how loud they are but man growing up my whole life was you're too, it's too loud it's too loud and when I would ask them what's loud what's loud it always came down to the symbols the, pe the thing that people complained about is when I would hit that cymbal, it'd be like, oh, it's this jolting, crashing sound. And cymbals are a hard thing to control the volume of, but the cool thing about cymbals is they're made to accent drums. So whenever you do a fill, doo -doo 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 -doo, psh, you hit the cymbal. But what can happen is if, 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 if that cymbal is just is being hit too loud or it's out of place, it actually distracts from the song. It's made to accent it. And I think that's, that's kind of a picture of what tone is like in communication. You can say the most loving thing, but if you don't say it in the right tone, it won't be heard. Uh, that's the thing. A lot of us, we just can't get past tone. And you say, well, I just speak the truth and people got to take it the way it is. I get that, right? I've been known to be pretty blunt in my life. Back in my younger days, ask Marcus and Natalie, I would say a lot of things very harshly and bluntly, but I learned that ultimately it's so important to get the tone right. And I believe God sets the example for us of this. You know, God is all powerful. He's ruling in heavens and earth and he can just speak the truth and, and his command could go forth and he could, with a one, one word from him, he created the, you know, the, the heavens and earth, let there be light, one spoken sentence. He has all the power in the world, but he, it, it's interesting that when you see in the Bible, when he communicates with us, unless he's communicating judgment to nations, he almost always does it in what would be called a still, small voice. There's a verse in 1 Kings 19 where Elijah is he's feeling all down and depressed, and, and uh, there's really no reason for him to feel down and depressed. He had just had this amazing experience of God coming through for him. But he's so down and depressed, and God could have just said, Elijah, pick, pull yourself together, man. Get it together. But it, said, it, it says that the Lord appeared to him this way. It says, Then a great and powerful wind tore through the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. So Elijah's you know, feeling bad about himself and all of a sudden this wind comes. And after this, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. So there's a shaking, loud, bold thing and the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire but the Lord was not in the fire. And it says, after that came a gentle whisper. Another one says, a, 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 a soft voice. Another translation says that. And I've seen that in our lives, man, God could just speak the truth, drop the mic, walk away, and leave us to deal with it. But He's so gentle about it. And I believe that is the example for us of how we're supposed to recognize that it's, it, it's, you don't just get to say what you want to say without recognizing the importance of tone. And as wise believers, as people who want to be wise in our relationships and not people that are always saying, man, I didn't mean for it to 
come through that way. I didn't mean to go for it to, to sound that way to them. We have to be very alert and attuned to the idea that you can, even if you're trying to show love, if you're not careful and you don't do it in the right tone, it can come across rather than a, an accent that adds to what you're trying to say, it can come across as a harsh gong or clanging cymbal. We have to be so careful about that. Proverbs 15, 1, it says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And it reminds me of something my dad taught me growing up. Um, you know, a few, a few years ago, I was sitting at a, um, a stoplight and uh, the, you know, the light turned green and we weren't moving and I got really mad and I waited for about 1.7 seconds patiently and then I laid on the horn and I was just laying on the horn and the guy in front of me offered me a conciliatory hand gesture with his middle finger and I, that made me even matter so I honked on the horn I was like, what's going on? Why aren't we moving? And I'll never forget, I saw up ahead trying to get across the intersection as fast as he could an, an older gentleman in a wheelchair and I felt like such a jerk. Man, I just lashed out. And it reminded me of something my dad taught me. He said this. He said, you always want to go in like a paranoid cat. You can turn into a roaring lion if you need to later. But if you go in yelling and screaming, you may find there's something you didn't realize and you'll look like the fool. But a paranoid cat goes into every situation going, is there something I'm not seeing here? And you go in gently. That's that, that gentle answer. So whenever you're maybe at work and you've got that employee that's always doing irritating things or maybe that boss that says these things you just want to explode at them maybe with your kids maybe with your spouse so many times we just we jump into lion mode and we're like I'm gonna tell them what's up I'm gonna tell the truth to them about what's going on and really we end up doing more harm because the Bible says a wise person recognizes the book of wisdom and Proverbs says and a gentle answer turns away wrath and you've seen this Man, when you go in like a lion, yelling, screaming, dropping the truth bombs, it only escalates things. It, and here's the thing, even if you win the battle, you don't really win the battle because you've destroyed the relationship in the process. And a lot of us, man, we've seen that throughout our lives. We've got some relationships that we regret the way they ended because we always do, we use these wrong, harsh tones. So my encouragement for you today is this. Uh, there's a verse in, in Ephesians 4.15. It said, let's speak the truth in love and we will, be, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of Him who is the head, that is Christ. That verse to me is saying, yes, we need to speak truth. We are called upon to speak truth, but we have to recognize that you don't just get to speak truth as you think it needs to be spoken. You have to recognize the importance of tone. And if you speak with the tongues of men's and men of angels, you can be the most eloquent orator. You can be the most eloquent speaker, communicator. But if you're doing it in the wrong tone because you don't have the love behind it, it will just come across not as a beautiful accented symbol, but as a loud clanging symbol. And really, you're not going to communicate what you ultimately want to communicate. So that's, that's my message for you today. It's a short message is this, that one of the most important things we can recognize is that it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. And we as Christians don't get the luxury of just saying it however we want. We have to speak the truth in love, gently, with a gentle answer to turn away wrath instead of stirring up anger. And this applies to online too. You know, one of the things about online, I've just decided I'm not going to get in online debates anymore because there's no room for tone. It comes across so harsh. If, even in the gentlest tone you can write, there's just no way around a face-to-face -face communication. There's some conversations we just shouldn't have online. There's some conversations we just shouldn't have by text message or even by phone. We need to get face-to-face -face and we need to go and into every conversation recognizing that, you know what, if I stir up anger here, it's not going to accomplish anything good in my relationships. And I may feel better about myself because I spoke the truth, but if you didn't do it in love, if you did it harshly, if you did it angrily, it's not going to accomplish what you want. So that's my message for Valentine's Day today. Um, I would just encourage you, man, really consider the way the tone is coming across. And, and sometimes you say, well, I thought I came across clearly. Well, one of the, but I didn't. One of the best things you can do, maybe in your, I have to do this with Emily a lot of times. I say, what could I have done differently to communicate in a way you could have heard where the tone didn't undermine my message? And I would encourage you to do that in your relationships. It takes a little bit of humility. You have to recognize, oh, I didn't do it well. But if you'll do that, I believe God will help you be able to communicate love in a way that may be a new level you've never been able to communicate with. And, and it may require going to your son or daughter and saying, hey, 
I realized that growing up, maybe I didn't communicate the way I should have with you. What could I have done differently to communicate in a tone that would have helped you understand? And then learn from that. And I believe that as we're becoming more wise in our communication and recognizing the power of the tone, God's going to give us not only the truth we need to navigate our relationships, but also wisdom about the way that we can do it gently in love. And as we do that, we will be a light to the world around us. I hope you have a great day today. Stay warm, stay cozy, stay cuddled up. And uh, we will hopefully, uh, yeah, that's the plan is we will see you next week once this cold weather has moved its way out. Y'all have a great Sunday. God bless. Happy Valentine's Day. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.